Yo, this is Ben Thomas, and you're here watching Next Up on YNL. Who is Ben Thomas? Ben Thomas is an audio engineer, music producer, studio owner. I'm from New York, but I grew up in Philly. So talk to us about where it all began. So I started in middle school. I had a friend who wanted to make a mixtape. And so we recorded a mixtape using GarageBand in our math teacher's classroom during lunch. So what's your working style when it comes to making music? Talk to us about like how, how you have to be in the studio, what it, like, what it all comes down to. Yeah, so mostly these days I've been focused on engineering. So uh, it's a lot of long days in the studio, recording and mixing. In terms of working style, um, I try to be very fast with the computer. I think speed is essential. And I try to always give everybody the best effort and try to make things sound as clean and polished as possible. Yeah, yeah. Holy fucking smokes, I got my money up, money up. Counting all these bands took me a while just to damn run it up, up. Multi-millions, I feel a hundred up. up All this cash on me Who have you been listening to recently in terms of artists? Hmm, uh, I'm, I'll be honest, I don't listen to a lot of music just because I work on it so much I think as of late, I've been listening to a lot of older things, things from like the 60s and the 70s and the 80s, trying to draw inspiration from that and seeing how I can incorporate those styles into the things that I'm working on currently. Talk to us about After Five Studios. What's the story behind it? Why Philly? Yeah, so the first version of After Five Studios was actually in my mom's basement when I was in high school. That's where she came up with the name because she said I could have anybody come over, but it would have to be After Five. And then uh, fast forward to 2020, I decided that the place that I was working at in Philly wasn't really suitable anymore, so I ended up not intending to open up my own studio. It was supposed to just be a place for me to work, but then um, due to my time commitments with Uzi and leaving Philly, um, we kind of turned it into a commercial facility, and it's been really dope because we have built a studio that caters towards women and people from the LGBTQ community so that they can feel like they have a comfortable place to record in the city where they might not be comfortable in a lot of other spaces. From Grammy nominations to all these many accolades, how do you keep yourself so grounded and so humble? I think for me, it's two, it's two ways that I can try to keep myself um, you know, grounded and centered. Uh, I think the first thing is you have to kind of disassociate yourself from the accolades because at the end of the day, they're not, they don't really have a lot to do with you. You know, um, I can go and I can do my best job recording or mixing or whatnot, but I don't really have a lot of control over the success of the song. So that can help kind of disassociate yourself from it a little bit. I also just think I have an amazing support system of family and friends, you know, that I spend a lot of time with, but it's like physically in person or, you know, on the phone and texting and whatnot. So I think that really helps keep me centered as well. You've worked with many different artists. What is the one gen that, de that genuinely touched you the most? So my favorite artist to ever work with, um, her name was Deja. We grew up together. We met right in the beginning of college in Philly. Um, she was a singer, rapper. We made a lot of really dope music together, but unfortunately she passed away in 2019 from cancer. So she is, will always be my favorite person to work with. And it's really the only person, you know, people ask like, oh, who would you want to work with? Who? Uh, she's always the only answer. Do you consider yourself a very independent? Uh, I mean, right now I am a freelancer. So, you know, all the work that I do is independent. I do work very closely, you know, with Rock Nation and with Generation Now, um, just from working with Uzi for a couple years now. But for the most part, um, I have the autonomy to work on whatever I choose. So as a producer, you tell us what makes a good song. I think what makes a good song is something that connects with people. I think as you know, when an artist puts out a song, you don't really get to explain it. I, I know we have websites like Genius and whatnot, but like it's up to the interpretation of the listener. And so I think a good song is something that connects with people. And it doesn't matter if it connects with one person or if it connects with a million people. You know, if it resonates, it connects with somebody, then it's a good song. Are you into any are you into any anime? No, I am not. I am not an anime person, actually. Um, so Uzi watch, likes to watch a lot of anime in the studio and I had to make him his own profile on, on my Netflix because he was destroying my algorithm because I do not watch anime. 
I did watch Attack on Titan. I watched like two episodes. I was like, that's cool. But Who even inspired you to start this whole journey as a whole? Talk to us about that. Um, so my journey in music, it really comes from a love and passion of audio. It wasn't necessarily a music thing. I did grow up, you know, I played in a alternative rock cover band in high school. Um, but it was always a passion about audio. Throughout my career, I've worked on everything from podcast editing to short films, TV, movies. Um, but music was the one that there was the most opportunity in and ultimately resonated with me the most. But it always comes back down to a, a love of just working on audio in general. So being in this industry for so long, and as long as you have been, what's your most memorable memory from doing this so far? Um, I think my most memorable memory so far was when Jasmine Sullivan won those two Grammys a couple years ago. Um, I'd met ja Jasmine was like the first major artist that I had worked with. You know, we started building a relationship in 2015 when I was. I mean, I hadn't even been using Pro Tools at that point, right? Like, I was still using Logic. I didn't really know what I was doing, but she believed in me, and you know, we spent a couple years working, and so just to see her finally get that shine, um, and then just to see other people that I'm very close with that I care about a lot, you know, um, be able to win off of that, it was it was a true blessing. I also think that, you know, it for me, it's more so about the things that the music has been able to provide for me than like the individual accolades or anything so you know certain things that resonate with me uh, and uh, for Christmas in 2020 I was able to call my cousins and ask them what what they wanted and buy them you know whatever they want I'm able to you know help support my mother and, and and do things for her and you know for other family members and friends and stuff like that is the thing that matters the most to me rather than just like the individual accolades those are cool of course and you know it's, it's a true blessing but uh, if you're just striving for those things then you'll never feel fulfilled so we've noticed with um, thanks to Rec and everybody that you really give back to the community. At least, you, at least you try to give back to the community as much as you can. Talk to us about that. What really goes into that? Yeah. So um, giving back is very, very important for me. Um, you know, my grandmother when she was alive, that's what she dedicated her life to was community engagement. Um, you know, she was on the board of Harlem Hospital. She was a professor at City College, so she dedicated her life to service of others. And so I think it's just in my blood. Everybody in my family works in education except for me. Um, and so. Giving back is essential, you know, I didn't, I'm not sitting here having this conversation based off my own merit, you know, I think for the first probably six or seven years of my career, um, all of the work that I got was off of relationships and people believing in me and people taking a chance off me. I don't think I started being able to get work off of skill until very, very recently. And so because of the people that helped me, I feel an obligation to help others. And I also enjoy it, you know, I enjoy inspiring people, I enjoy, uh, talking to students, whether it's like high school students or college students, and just trying to be as open and honest as possible. Because I think that, you know, a lot of times we see people's highlight reels on social media, but you know, when I speak at a college or I speak at a high school, I'm very comfortable sharing all of the failures, you know, the opportunities that I messed up, the times that I was reduced to tears because I made a mistake, you know. Um, I don't, I try not to just tell it as a, I try not to tell my story as just a list of accomplishments because that's not what happened. And I just wanna, you know, provide a lot of opportunities. You know, I have to be honest about who I am and what my life is. And, you know, I grew up single mom in Harlem before it was super nice and everything. And, you know, if you play my story a hundred times, 99 times, it probably goes in the other way. And so since it didn't go like that for me, I feel, you know, a deep sense of obligation to try to help um, people as much as possible. Do you feel like your experiences in your past definitely made you who you are like the man that you are today? 100%. Um, my experiences in my past, you know, have definitely shaped me. As, as I keep saying, it's all about family and friends and having that support system. Um, and so those experiences have shaped me and I'm, you know, looking forward to new experiences shaping me. Um, the crazy thing about this kind of career is you never know what's going to happen. You know, I, ne I never thought in a million years I'd be in the position that I am right now. You know, I never thought that a song that Uzi and I recorded in his friend's living room at 4.30 in the morning would become a number one hit. Like, you know, you never know what's gonna happen next. So that's one way that you can stay grounded and you can keep you humble because you never, you never know. You can't predict a lot of these things. It's just about, you know, something somebody told me is that if you're a good person and you're doing hard work, opportunities will come to you. It's up to you to capitalize on them and it's up to you to take them when they come and realize when a good opportunity is presented to you and knowing what to do with it. You know, I think there's not a lot, there's not a lack of opportunity, but there is a lack of people who are willing to do the tremendous amount of work and sacrifice to capitalize on it.
Finally, Ben, any advice for the up and coming generation that want to be in your footsteps one day? So I think the most important thing that gets left off a lot of times when you know people in my position share advice and whatnot is you have to get really, really, really good at what you want to do, whether that's like producing, engineering, mixing, you know, photography, uh, whatever it is, like in order to have sustained success, you have to be excellent at what you do. And I think that is a hard truth for a lot of people to understand, right? So I think when you're when you're working with an up and coming artist, let's say, right, there's a lot of value in being able to do lots of different things, you know? There's a lot of value in, in, in being able to be the person where it's like, yo, come to me and I can like make your beat, record your song, shoot your video, and I'll help you design your album cover. But when you start working at higher levels, you have to think, right? Uzi can hire the best engineer, the best photographer, the best producers, the best videographers, and they have essentially have an unlimited budget, right? So there's not a lot of value in me being able to do lots of different things. What there is value in is me becoming the best possible person at what I can do, and then that's where you will see opportunities, right? So in the beginning, there's this, this strong temptation to do a lot of different things, but really what you should probably do is focus in and getting really, like uncomfortably good at one thing where there's no question why somebody is calling you. And then if you can add the soft skills on top of that, being a cool person, you know, being able to write an email without typos, you know, being a good hang in the studio, being trustworthy and reliable, then you'll have sustained success for sure.